Because of this pure bhakti. Oh, there's no another mic, only one mic, is it? You can use this one. Because of his pure bhakti, Eka Bhaktya to Krishna alone, even though he did not desire these things, his heart was fixed on Krishna Shanta because he had all knowledge Kavihi. He was not attracted. This thing is finished as well. An ideal Vaishnava Brahmana, even if encumbered by the ties of family life, should work only as hard as required to meet his obligations. Without being unnecessarily agitated for material advancement, he should devote the best part of his time and assets to his higher duties in the Supreme Lord's service. If a householder can succeed in this program, despite the unavoidable difficulties of this degraded age, he can expect Lord Krishna's personal attention, as will be seen in the case of Shrutadev, the perfect Brahmana of Mithila. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Thamiranda Sanyana Anjana Shalakaya. Takshagavan Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnapada Yagrishna Prashta Yabhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminati Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyava Di Paschat Kadeshatarine Panchakal Pataru Vyascha Krapas in Dubya Evacha Paditanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare That was a sentence we spent a lot of time yesterday. Hmm. So here he says, if a householder can succeed in this program of performing his higher duties to Supreme Lord's service, then he says, despite the unavoidable difficulties of this degraded age, he can expect Lord Krishna's personal attention, he's saying. Yeah? You get Krishna's personal attention. So Krishna gave personal attention to Shrutadeva also and also Bahulashu also, both of them. Hmm. So that means personal glance of Krishna comes in your life yeah? when you are attentive to uh, allot the best part of your time and assets to higher duties in Supreme Lord service. So, uh, see when he, when he uses the word best part of his time, uh, generally in this world, we all consider something to be very important and other things, things to be less important. Correct? No? Whatever you consider is very important, you devote time in that. Like for example, some students say academics is most important. And I don't mind chanting a few rounds and once in a while coming for the program. Correct, no? Similarly, working people think that, you know, first making money is a primary important thing. And then I can also a little bit side by side practice. So, therefore, he's saying here, if you allot the best part of your time, hmm, just like we have this prime time, we say, no? Huh? You give to Krishna service and also assets to higher duties of Supreme Lord service. Then, Krishna has to pay personal attention to you. So, both in Brahmacharya Ashrama and Grihastha Ashrama, we can see um, devotees' uh, seriousness to different degrees. Uh, uh, somebody may take Krishna consciousness life and soul. Somebody else may take Krishna consciousness as a side activity. So, and there is a gradation of people in between, uh, different types of people. So, what are some of the things that we can say that one takes Krishna consciousness as prime goal of life. What uh, visible symptoms can you see? Any of you can say? 
some of the visible symptoms in a devotee, uh, uh, which you can say that they, this person is considering Krishna consciousness the prime goal in life. Priority yeah. in chanting. Priority in chanting, yes. That means, you know, rise up early in the morning and you want to finish all the rounds in the morning and it does not drag till the late night. And that's one thing, okay? Anything else? Coming to temple regularly. Coming to temple regularly, <coughs> okay? Correct, very good. Ah, he simplifies material life, he doesn't expand his material life too much. Huh? Because if you want to have an expanded material life, a lot of time goes in maintenance of those things also. And a lot of energy goes in making money also. Huh? He keeps material program simple, spiritual program elaborate. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. And then? Ah, try to find out what will please Guru and Krishna. And then very attentively try to focus on those activities, like, uh, like uh, for example. Okay, so he is mainly talking about the dealings with other devotees. Okay, anybody else? Don't waste the time. He doesn't waste the time. Abhyar the kalatvam, huh? Very attentive to spending time usefully, fruitfully in Krishna service. Yes, very careful about. Okay, he's very uh, alert about cleanliness. Thank you. Ah, that's the one thing that I expected. Right at the beginning, we should give him an applause for Siddhesh. <laughs> Priority to hearing, because hearing is like the injection for a uh, man with viral fever. Hmm? Actually, if man has a viral fever, injection is a medicine which is very vital. Now, many other items we heard. You may say you should eat a bland diet. You should take good rest. You should not come in the freezing cold outside. And all that is correct. But what is the most important thing? Medicine, medicine should be administered, right? And that medicine is what Siddhesh Prabhu said. Hearing. So, hearing and reading. Reading proper books and hearing lectures. And the right type of lectures which will actually awaken the sleeping soul. Huh? That type of thing one should hear. He has to have a hearing program every day. Reading and hearing should be very prompt. Huh? Without compromise. Generally, what happens, whenever life becomes busy, you will compromise that activity which you think is not that important. Huh? And uh, some people compromise on spiritual activities, and other people compromise on material activities. How many of you here feel that our modern day fast paced life forces us to compromise on uh, something, some things? Correct, no? Yeah. So, when it comes to compromise, if you are compromising on spiritual activities, that goes to show our slackness. If our compromises we make on material life, that goes to show our seriousness. Correct, no? So, therefore, the hearing, chanting, services, and, uh, uh, you know, coming in the assembly, uh, assembly of devotees. One another very important thing is the following the regulative principles strictly. Huh? Prabhupada actually begins with uh, no illicit sex. Then he says no meat eating, no intoxication, then no gambling. Four things he says. So, um, in, in, uh, in the world, like the Western world, it's rampant with these activities. Huh? So, one, for one to keep oneself pure, one has to strictly adhere to the four regular principles also. And if one is going to compromise on these, uh, then one is going to dampen one's spiritual life also. Right now? So, in this way, it says here that he should devote the best part of his time and assets to his higher duties in the Supreme Lord's service. Huh? For such a person, Lord gives personal attention, he says. Hmm. Yeah. This reminds me of how, uh, hmm, like there was one spiritual master. He went to meet one devotee who was living in a very small house. Very small room, husband, wife and one daughter, little daughter. So, because they had done some very big service in the temple. Huh? And uh, they had involved uh, more than 100 devotees and they, they were leading the service. Although this Prabhuji works for a very simple job, it doesn't earn much money. This person must be very pleased. So he said that you did the service so well, all devotees are happy with you. So I'll come to your house. They went to his house. Now this fellow got a personal attention of the spiritual master because he did some laudable service. Although he's not very rich, he's not a very big man, he's a very simple man. But uh, by his surrender, he attracted the Guru to his house and uh, gave him attention. Mm. 
on the contrary somebody may be very popular in the material world but they may not be spiritually contributing so much that guru has to go to his house correct no so here also krishna gives personal attention when he is pleased with the devotee's service like he went to vidra's house huh? now here he will go to sudeva's house you will see that what huh? gives personal attention he says so Now it's about the next uh, another devotee, great devotee, that king. Tata tat rashtra palunga. Tata tat rashtra palunga. Bahula ashwa iti shrutaha. Bahula ashwa iti shrutaha. Maitilo niraham mana. Maitilo niraham mana. Uba vapta chuta priyau. See, in the same Nithila city, there was rashtra pal means a king. His name is? Bahulashwa, Itishrutaha, very famous, known as Bahulashwa. Maitilo, Niraham Mana. You know, he was never proud that I am a king. Huh? And uh, all are my praja, they are all subordinate to me. I am a great king. He never had the uh, pride. And Jivagusam in his commentary says, This king was such a great devotee, he never thought I am a great devotee. That also he didn't think. Huh? Neither did he think I am a king, nor did he think I am a great devotee. He thought, I am a very simple, insignificant devotee. Uh, <coughs> therefore, Ubhavapi Achyuta Priyav. Both Bhagulashwara and Shruta Dev, they became dear to Lord Achyuta. Uh, Achyuta Priyav. They became very dear to the Lord. Yeah. See, when Chakudra Guru, what he says, did not identify himself falsely as a king. Neraham Manaha. And what Jyoga Sami says, read the blue portion, blue highlighted. Manaha, Niraham Manaha, yeah. The Lord who never deviates from his qualities. Yeah. So, Lord naturally is the merciful to his devotees, and these two devotees are very, very dear to Lord Krishna. Mm-hmm. So, thinking themselves unqualified to see the Lord because of great humility from bhakti, they did not go to Dwaraka, he says. So, they both were worshipping deities in their home. Huh? They never went to Dwaraka, he says. Tayo prasanno bhagavan, daruke nakritam rasam, arukya sakam manibhir, idehan payaya prabhu, uh, pleased by those two devotees, Lord Krishna called Tarka. I told him, My dear Tarka, make a chariot ready. He told him, Arukya climbing the chariot, Saka Munibir, along with the Rishis and Munis. The Lord got to, Lord, Lord, Lord went to, Gideha is actually Mitrapuri. Maybe uh, Sajanaka Videha, we said. So, why did he? Whose name is Vaidehi? Sita, yeah. So he went to the Dehapuri. I read the purple. Both of them had moved to regularly worship their personal duties at home. He insisted that the sage who wanted to come with him should join him. On his chariot, because otherwise they would exhaust themselves following on foot. Renowned sages would ordinarily never even consider traveling in such an opulent uh, but on the Lord's order, they put aside their natural aversion and joined him on his chariot. Yeah, so Lord was traveling in a golden chariot and he invited the sages to also climb up the chariot and travel with him. So the sages by nature are renounced and austere and they go from one holy place to another by foot. But here, because the Lord insisted and called them, they did not refuse. They put aside their austerity and were willing to travel with the Lord. This is something important to learn. Uh, Actually, association of Lord Krishna is far superior than the austerity one may perform to attain Krishna. (laughs) They understood that if you are telling Krishna, you go ahead, my dear Lord, to Mithila, we will come by walk. You know, but the, what is the purpose of their austerity? To attain Krishna. But Krishna himself is calling you. <laughs> so they decided to go with Krishna. Uh, 
that yes, let's board. Of course, by boarding the chariot and going with Krishna, they may be criticized by the public that hey, Rishis Munis are coming in golden chariot. Correct or not, isn't it? But they didn't mind it. Even if people criticize us, no problem because we are getting whose association? Krishna's association. With that mindset, they were traveling. So uh, sometimes brahmacharis are also taken in very costly cars. One time I was uh, uh, taken by one devotee in a car. You know, that car opens like Garuda. Like in the town. <laughs> Is it Tesla car, huh? Yeah. Is it Tesla car? Yeah. Somebody put me inside and they took a photo from outside. <laughs> and people uh, people told me, Rajshampu, you travel in Tesla car. Huh? I said, I don't know which is the car you're talking about. <laughs> then they told me, do you remember one uh, it opened like this? Then I said, I remember. I was wondering why it goes up. You know? So, for me, either you bring Tesla car or whatever car you bring, Bella car or Tesla car, <laughs> you have to go to the program, correct? No? So, the goal is to go to the program and give some lecture. Who knows what car it is? You don't know the model of the car. So, devotee means our concern is that we get an opportunity to preach. So, these sages thought we can accompany Krishna, go with him. We get the personal touch of the Lord, association of the Lord. They were all happy to go. Only thing is they didn't know how to climb up the chariot. So Krishna himself gave them the hand and pulled them up. You'll see that. It'll be here. Vishwanath Goswami writes there. It'll come now. He is writing all the names of the rishis. Who all went? Narada, Vamadeva, Atri, Krishna, Ramo, Asito, Arunhi. Aham, Chavita Goswami is saying Aham, he is also, he was also there. Brihaspati, Kanva, Maitreya, all big fellows, big personalities. Chavana Adeha, <laughs> Adeha means many more people. Rama is Parasharama, Krishna is Dvaipana Vyasa, <coughs> Krishna Dvaipana Vyasa. Huh? All Vyasa, Chavita Goswami, Parasharam, big, big people. Huh? They were the one. Tatra Tatra Tamayantam. Paura jana padantrupa Upatastuhu sardhya hasta Grahaihi surya mivoditam See <clears throat> Read there Every city and town the Lord passed along the way who came, the people came forward to worship him with offerings of harga, water in their hands, as it as it to worship the horizon sun surrounded by planets. Yeah. Uh, Jeevasam's commentary, really? highlighted portion. Who the sages were effulgent in proximity to the Lord, their effulgence dulled. dulled. That means Krishna was like the sun. Huh? In the presence of sun, can you see the stars? No. no. As the sages were in the same chariot, but Krishna was outshining all of them due to his their presence coming from his body. Huh? Yeah. And then below another version. Another version has Kripa. Mm -hmm. no. Local kings also approached the Lord. He was like the sun rising with the planets. This is Adbut Upa Upama. Upama. When the Lord rises, the planet the sun rises. Oh, when the sun rises. But now the sages, the proximity to the Lord became very effulgent. And they became uh, effulgent by Krishna's presence there. That's what they are saying. Very beautiful verses. Mm -hmm. These are the name of the places. Uh, Anartha, Danva, Kuru, Jangala, Kanka, Matsya. These are the places Krishna crossed through. All the names of the places are given. Uh, and then uh, here it says, third line says, Anyechatan Mukha Saroja Mudara Hasa Snigdekshanam Nripapapur Drishabir Nanadiya. Hmm. All these places when Krishna was traveling, first two lines talk about the places. Huh? And then the third line says that Krishna's uh, lotus ma face, Mukasarojam, Udarahasa means his broad smile. Snigdekshana means it is moist glance. And Dripa, oh, King Parikshit. Papur means all the people drank. Who? Drishabir Nanadiya. All the men and women who were watching. On either side of the road, when the chariot was coming, so they were all drinking the beauty of Krishna and his broad smiling face uh, through their eyes. They drank the beauty, like that he says. 
Those? Those who are on the path from Anartha. 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 And other places and others and me. Who were far from the path, but came and gathered along, along the road. Bags in their eyes, the lotus feet of his face. Yeah, Anjay Goswami, what he says? All the men and women. All the men and women are Krishna lotus feet, lotus face with great attraction. The provinces are listed in order that travel from Dwarka to in Vaide. Some places <coughs> are neighboring states. Yeah, and all the places he went, one after the other, he gave them to, went to give them. Yes, he gave. He made them very happy. So the rice, uh, like the bees, were drinking with greed. The rasa produced on seeing Krishna. Uh, they saw him with great attachment. They say hmm? they had only heard about him. Now they are seeing him. Now they drank his face with, which was smiling broadly and had affectionate glances. And now it is going to be more explained very nicely. Hmm? Shemanti Loka Guru Ratta Drisham Chayachan Shemanti Loka Guru Ratta Drisham Chayachan Gitam Surain Dibiragat Shanakair Videham See, he is saying Vinashta Tamishra Drigbyaha, he says. Which means, Tamishra means darkness. Uh, means the directions. Vinashta means the strike. So as Krishna progressed forward uh, yeah, in his chariot, he was destroying all the darkness on all sides in the front. Uh, he says, how? Svavikshana, by his own glance. Uh, when Krishna moved his glance like this, he destroyed all darkness, he says. Now, what is the darkness that is being spoken here? This darkness is the ignorance of the people. And what is the ignorance of the people? Can ordinary people recognize Krishna when they see him? Like you see your Duryodhana, uh, Karna, Krishna, they couldn't recognize Krishna. So, their inability to recognize Krishna is their ignorance. And that ignorance is called darkness, and that darkness was dissipated. When Krishna smilingly glanced at them, that means he empowered the eyes to recognize him. Uh -huh. Now, Jyotisham in the commentary he will ask, see how can these people, ordinary people, get to see Krishna eye to eye? He has a Satchitananda Swarupam, uh, not like Panchamabhut body like ours. Uh, yes, nobody can see Krishna's body properly, but when Krishna gives them the uh, adhikar or empowerment to see, then they can see. And by glancing at them and smiling, Krishna gave them that. So he gave them the ability to see Artha Drisham. So Shanman Dikanta Tantavanam Sayasho Ashubagnam. So by his own fame, Krishna destroyed all the inauspiciousness. Gnam means to destroy. Yeah. Gitam Surai Nabiraga Chanakair Videhan. So uh, here you see, he endured with the fearlessness and divine vision. He gave them. He heard demigods and men singing his glories, which purify the entire universe and destroy all the misfortune. Read the purport, very important purport. Yeah, read it. Sri Rajiva Goswami raises the logical question of how the ordinary people along the path could even see the Lord. Since not only were their eyes covered by ignorance, but the Lord's jacket was traveling faster than the wind. The blind glance of the says that Lord Krishna's special glance of mercy empowered every one of them with the devotional purity required for entering into his association. Uh, therefore, even when we all go to the temple, uh, sometimes uh, one does not have so much attraction to take darshan of the deities or bow down or circumambulate. Hmm? Uh, one may some of the days miss the darshan and things like that. But if a devotee uh, simply has a habit of going to the Lord uh, and bowing down to Him uh, as a matter of duty and sincerity, because Acharyas have taught us to do manmana, avahumad, bhakto, mad, yaji, maam, uh, we keep doing that. 
then Lord will take pity on us. He will think that this fellow is ignorant fellow. He can't see me properly. So I will give him the glance to see me. Then we will get Darshan to see. I heard a story in this connection. You all know in Vrindavan there is one temple called the Banki Bihari temple. So one day there was a big festival. Huge crowds of people were coming and going out. At the time one, one Sajji was entering the temple. And one fellow was coming out, the Sajji was going in, they both hit each other and both of them fell to the ground. And when they got up, you know, the Sajji um, yelled at the person. He asked him, Hey, Andeho kya? He asked him, Are you blind? And that man nodded their head and said, Yes, sir, yes, sir, I am blind. He said, Now the Sajji became even more angry. If you are blind, what work you have in the temple? Huh? What is the use of your coming to temple? I mean, because you can't take darshan of the deities. Then why are you coming and troubling people like me? Coming and hitting uh, uh, all of us in such a big crowd. So then the blind man said, Sir, I come to the temple not to see the Lord. I come to the temple to be seen by the Lord. Huh? Because when Lord uh, glances at the, the jivas in front of him, the Lord has uh, eyes with Amrita Varsha. Huh? You, know, you know, when Lord glanced at the dead covered boys, they all rose up. Uh, rose up. They all came back to life. Huh? the power of his vision. And when the Lord looked at the jivas and by glance he transported them to this world, correct now? Into the Prakriti. You know, Vishnu sa aikshata saha asrijata. You know, Shruti Mantra say that. Saha aikshata, Lord glances and puts the jivas in this world, huh? in Prakriti. The Lord's eyes are extremely powerful and they can give uh, life to dead people. So the man said, sir, I am like a dead man. I am a blind man. I have no life. But if Lord glances at me, it's good for me. And he also said, for a child to be in the safe glance of the mother, it is good for the child. When the mother is working in the kitchen, her one eye is in the kitchen, one eye is in the child. So I come to the temple, what to do? You know, I am a blind man. I just want the Lord to bless me. I come. I also hear some saintly people speak something about the Lord that keeps ringing in my heart all day when I hear two words in the morning and go. Therefore, I come to temple, he said. Hearing this, the sage said, Are ande tum ne yo me andao. He said, huh? You are not blind. I am a blind man because you have such an attitude which I don't have. He said, huh? So you are a blessed soul. Huh? He said. So, in this way, we get the eyes when Lord glances at us mercifully. Now, Prabhupada says, in this world, where material world, everything is pitch dark. In the morning, for example, you get up, it's Amavasya day, and there's a power cut. Can you look at your hand? You can't see. But when the sun rises, then you can look at the sun and you can look at your hand also. That means the sun is empowering our eyes to, to be able to see everything. Similarly, so Lord is empowering our eyes to see His spiritual nature. Correct, no? So, therefore, by hearing, yesterday I told you the meaning of the word darshan, two meanings. Huh? One meaning is seeing another meaning. Uh, so this is darshan and this is darshan. So you take this darshan first, then you can get this darshan. Correct? Right? In this way. <coughs> Read that. Chakur says he destroyed. He destroyed the ignorance in their eyes by his bestowed upon them. Realization of the Supreme Lord. Arthur, the Supreme object. Supreme object, Artha, Drisham. Drisham, and devotion to himself, the only means of realizing his sweetness, Shema. Mm, yeah. So, in this way, the mm, Lord is giving them the realization. See here, Jogosam says similar thing. See the fourth line, he gave them fearlessness and vision. Read that their eyes. Their eyes were endowed with the Prakashaka Shakti. Prakashaka Shakti, yeah. This energy which causes revelation arising from the Lord Swarupa in the form of Bhakti. Ah, Prakashaka Shakti is that Shakti which empowers the devotee to recognize the Lord and appreciate the Lord. Huh? It's called Prakashaka Shakti, yeah. And by the manifestation of those eyes? By the manifestation of those eyes, they could see Krishna. Thus, he is called Guru of the three worlds since he initiated them with Bhakti. Ah. That means Krishna giving them the vision is like Guru opening the eyes of the disciple. Jnana Anjana, 
चला गया अरे गान ना रीड दैट जैसा वेरी ब्यूटीफुल कमेंट है सनातन गोस्वामी ही गिव टू द मेन एंड वुमेन हुज आई डिसीज और हुज यूजलेसनेस समिश्रा वाज डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय दिस गॉड केयरलेसनेस ऑफ samsara came up and eyes earth to dishon since he gave special vaidha diksha as the best guru in the in three worlds <laughs> so uh, the tamishra means the darkness in the eyes of the common people was destroyed by krishna's glance and he also awarded them shame fearlessness from samsara also huh? and he gave the martha drishtam the ability to see पौराजान पदा नृप अभीता सो ते अच्युत प्राप्त हाबिंग अबटेन्ड Lord uh, Achyuta coming to their village. Huh? Lord, uh, they saw that oh, Lord has come to our place. Akarne paura jana pada anrupa. Huge crowds of people now gathered to see Krishna and welcome Krishna in into their abode, their place. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, <coughs> they all came to see him with uh, offering. Everybody brought their offerings in their hands. Huh? Yeah. Just like uh, you might have read in the chapter, how uh, Dwarka was is welcome to Krishna into Dwarka, correct? Now, now when Krishna leaves Dwarka, our first Krishna intimate intimate people is by blowing the shank, five hundred and eighty shank, correct? Now, played that. Immediately, all the sleeping uh, Dwarka was is they got up, they jumped up, and the, because the shank Nad they know very well, this this kind of shank is blown by Lord Krishna himself. Huh? Then everybody ran to the Frontiers of Dwaraka, carrying their own small small gifts. Somebody was a flower seller, you know, he carried a flower garland for Krishna. Somebody was a jeweler, he carried some ring or a necklace for Krishna. Somebody is a textile man, he carried some anga vastra or special silken cloth for Krishna, and to offer him something like that. Everybody, somebody was a sweetmeat shop owner, he carried some sweets to offer to Krishna, like right, no. In this way. Everybody carried whatever was their business. They carried in their hands to go and offer. And while offering those gifts, they all said, "Our offering is like a raver dvipam yuvod vijay." They are saying that it is like a lamp in front of the sun. Huh? You know, you are so great, we are so small, but we don't have anything bigger to give you. But we know very well that you you only seek love, nothing else. So we are offering whatever little we have. Huh? So in this way. They all, I mean, the way they received Dwarka Vasis. You should read that in the first canto, eleventh chapter. Beautiful chapter it is. So they literally cried. Many of them, uh, while welcoming Krishna, they joyfully cried, uh, and they were delighted because after a long time they are seeing him now. So the example is given just as how a child would rush to welcome his father. I literally saw that with my eyes in uh, Pune airport. Huh? One mother was holding a boy in her uh, hand, and they were waiting for receiving the man. I think the man probably went to US for six months or eight months, and then he's coming back after a long time. Huh? So the wife is watching. She was happy to see the husband coming, but this boy jumped off from mother's hands and ran into the airport, huh? seeing the father coming at a distance in pune i mean india they don't allow you to go inside here you can go inside also i think <laughs> isn't it that is very strict huh? they don't let anyone go in so some of the airport fellows uh, you know appointed people they came and caught the boy and said hey there you cannot go huh? go out stand outside but the head airport authority the top uh, officer he saw them uh, stopping the boy He told them, "No, no, chodo dosko, chodo dosko, chodo. Jaane do." So he allowed because he understood the boy is running out of affection for his father. And then he, papa, 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 he ran and then father picked him up and he caught hold of his neck and tightly was embracing. So when I saw that sight, I immediately felt this is the way Dwarka was received Krishna also. 
awards. Uh, he says that in the 11th chapter. Uh, so they welcomed him, they gifted him, they offered obeisances to him, they praised him, they had tears in their eyes, uh, a smile in their face. And uh, then they offered many, many prayers. One prayer they are saying, Traipishtapanam Abhidura Darshanam, they are saying. They are saying that Traipishtapanam means the Devatas. Even for them, you don't give darshan the way you give us. Because we see you very closely. Hmm? We can look at your beautiful face and your behavior very <coughs> nearby. But these devatas, they have to go to Brahma and Brahma takes them to the Sagar, uh, the milk ocean. You will be way uh, inside lying in Ananta <laughs> They see you from a distance. Huh? They can't see your darshan very clearly. Just like Balaji darshan. <laughs> Isn't it? From a distance, you see, they throw you out <laughs> immediately. But ours is not like that. In Dwaraka, we can see you very nearby. You are a king. We agree that you are a king, but you deal with us so nicely. We can daily see you walking in the Rajamarga. Rajamargam kate krishne dwaraka ya kulastriyaha. Harmyani aluruhur vipra uttamashlo kate chetasam. Nityam nirikshamananam yadapi dwaraka ukasam. Na vitrupyanti hi drishaka shriyodam angamachutam. These are all verses coming in the about the dwaraka krishna walking in Rajamargam. Rajamargam kate krishne. Uh, Dwarakaya Kulastri, the Kulastris in Dwaraka will climb up the towers and from the rooftop they will be showering flowers, they will be watching Krishna passing every day. So it is mentioned that uh, they never got tired in seeing the lords walking daily. Uh, every day Krishna in different dress, very beautifully dressed. Like that for they, they is also be dressed every day in different dress and watch his beauty. Uh, like that. So, Navidripyanti, they never got satiated, saturated. So, in this way, the uh, Lord, as, Lord's arrival was received in the Dwarka, uh, by all the Dwarka verses. They are saying also that you go to various places like Hastinapuram and uh, Vrindavan, Mathura. Please do not forget us. You also, uh, you know, visit us and stay with us, like they are requesting. Uh, they are saying that our eyes are useless without your presence in Dwaraka. Vishwata Vuttama Shlokam Pritiyut Phula Pritiyut Phula Ananashayaha Kair Ditan Jalibir Nemuhu Shruta Purvam Statamunim See, Drishtvata Uttama Shlokam, having seen Krishna, all these people, Preeti Utfulan and Ashaya, their, uh, immediately their uh, faces were filled with blossoming smiles. And all their faces were filled with smiles, everybody. And all of them, you know, Krithanjali means like this, bringing both hands together. And they raised it above their head like this. All of you do this, like this. Like this, they did welcome to this. And the reason Acharya has given the real purport is why they did like this so that they can see Krishna's beauty. Now, if you are doing like this, you know, some people don't know you can't see the large beauty. So they were holding like this hand. <laughs> uh, like that is fine. Uh, read it. Translation. As, as soon as, as soon as. As soon as the people saw the Lord, Uttama Shloka, their faces and hearts blossomed with affection. Running their palms above their heads, they bowed down to the Lord and to the sages accompanying him. Whom they had previously only heard about. Oh, <laughs> these are all VVIPs. Huh? In Pune, it recently happened like that. You know, we had a GBC meeting in Pune for about one week or ten days. So all big, big GBC sannyasis, gurus had come. From the Gopaksha Maharaj was there, from Lokanath Maharaj was there, um, Bhakti Vaibha Maharaj was there, uh, and uh, and uh, and also uh, Narendra Maharaj was there, Sir Ranath Maharaj was there. And uh, Devakirandan Prabhu, like that many, there were uh, almost 30 to 40 people out of which half of them are Prabhupada disciples. Yeah? Many of them were there. Almost 20 Prabhupada disciples and uh, another uh, 20 leaders of uh, Indian Yatra, senior leaders. So what we did was, in the temple hall, you know, close to Sanctum Sanctorum, we allotted one big rectangular space, almost this hall size. That portion we kept only for them. And they put barricades, nobody can enter that area 
just in front of the ladies, they can take darshan nicely. And we all were behind that portion. So morning, this side and this side, Prabhuji side, Mataji side, we have never seen Mangalarthi in our temple so crowded. <laughs> you know, there were practically 2,000 people every day in the temple morning. You know, all the days in the galleries also, below also, everybody was thronging the place. Simply to witness these people, they are all proper disciples, uh, spent more than 50 years, many of them. Five decades they have spent. Huh? And uh, they, uh, all these people coming and he was there. Bhakti Marga Maharaj was there also. He made everybody clap hands like this. Huh? In different ways. You, know, you have seen that? Yeah. In Tulsiharti, he would dance with everybody, making everybody dance. Like that. Uh, so, it was a very memorable uh, time. Uh, so, what would happen? When one guru would come into temple, the whole population will fall flat on the ground, offering obeisances. They would get up. By the time they get up, another one will, one will come. <laughs> They'll again offer. And one Maharaj will go to take Balaji Darshan. When he's going out, one obeisance is falling. Then after Balaji Darshan, again he'll come back to the temple hall from the other side. Then again one more. So one devotee was telling me, Prabhuji, my hands and legs are failing now. <laughs> today, today I did more than thousand obeisances. I told him, hey, Raghunath Das did 2,000 every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this way, people, they are not only seeing Krishna now, they are also seeing all the sages. They have heard about Vyas, they have heard about Chukade Goswami, Chavaramani, so many others. Huh? Big, big personalities. Diggaj, huh? sages, all of them. So now people, they don't know, everybody is talking, hey, do you know that Maharaj's name? Huh? Hey, you see, this Maharaj, who is this making everybody clap hands? Who is dancing? Some people came and asked me, who is he? I don't know this Bhakti Maharaj Maharaj. Some of them are seeing them for the first time. So they don't know names also, but they know that they are great souls. They are proper disciples. They have spent many years. So, and every day I was introducing, uh, we fixed 1-1 one, one class for 1-1 one, one Maharaj. So I got a chance to glorify 5-5 five, five minutes every day. And I would tell many minute things about uh, them in my exchanges with them, <coughs> every day introduction. So I got many emails saying that, Prabhu, we loved the Bhagavatam classes, but more than that, we loved your introduction <laughs> about those great souls. They are very grateful. We never knew about them. But we got an idea. So every day I got to introduce them. So it was such a festival occasion and congregation cooked, you know, practically 80 to 100 varieties of prasad every day. Uh, different. Uh, some of them uh, were very austere in eating. Some of them like good varieties. So many varieties they had made. It was so many of the Maharaj and others said, uh, "Oh, this is better than a star hotel." They said, "We have a uh, Govindas, Govindas below and above. We have this uh, fifty-room guest house." <laughs> so all the Maharaj stayed there, and they would come. Very, very. Uh, it's all cooked by the devotees. And they also packed the prasad for the journey, dry prasad, so many things. In, the, in fact, so many gifts were given. Maharaj was saying, I think you have to send me one devotee with me so that he can carry the gifts. <laughs> it was, so, here also you will see people, they are offer, coming and offering gifts, offering obeisances, welcoming huh? all the great sages along with the Lord, along with Lord Krishna. Hmm? Did you go know what he is saying? I have heard of Krishna's All the people are saying, hey, do you know this sage? Hey, do you know this Chavanamani? You know, do you know this uh, Vedavyasa? You know this Shukadeva Goswami? You know his greatness. Some of them knew, some of them didn't know. Those who didn't know heard from those who knew. Uh, in this way, there was a talk all around about uh, the Lord as well as the sages. Even the Lord, some of them, uh, they, haven't, they hadn't seen him face to face. They had heard all his pastimes and glories. Now they are seeing him personally. Svanugrahaya Sampraptam Manvanautam Jagat Gurum Maitila Shruta Devascha Padayo Petatu Prabho So, um, Svanugrahaya Sampraptam 
to get Krishna's glance and grace uh, to receive. Uh, uh, and Krishna is a Jagat Guru. We say, no, uh, uh, Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Madhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishna Mande Jagat Guru. So he is a Jagat Guru of the whole universe. So uh, two personalities came to offer obeisances to him. One is the uh, leader of uh, Mithila, which is Bahulashwa and Shrutadev. But Shrutadev felt that I am a poor Brahman. When the king is coming to invite the Lord, it's not proper for me to stand in front of the king. So he went behind the king. Uh, so king offered obeisances right in front of the Lord and Shrutadev <coughs> offered obeisances a little way behind out of his humility. Padi Yoho Petatu Prabho. They offered obeisances to Krishna. Hmm. So the king of the Mithra and Shutra, they both fell huh, uh, at the feet of Krishna. Yeah. Do you have something? What he says? Thinking that the Guru of the universe, worshipped by Brahma and others, had come to offer him to give mercy along with the sages, some, the two fell at the feet of their own Lord, or he who was able to fulfill all their prayers, Prabhu. The best Brahmana, Sudadeva, mentioned after the king, since out of Meekness, he remained behind the king out of respect. Correct, that's what I was telling you. Yeah. Yeah, read the translation. At exactly the same time, King Maithila and Sudadeva each went forward with joint arms and invited the Lord of the Prasadhas to be his guest along with the Brahmanas, Brahmana children. <laughs> Both of them invited. And Lord Krishna accepted both their invitation also, and he went to both the places also. Huh? Yeah. Bhagavam Santat Abhipretya Bhagavam Santat Abhipretya Bhayo Priya Chikirshaya Bhayo Priya Chikirshaya Bhayo Priya Chikirshaya See, Bhagavam Santat Abhipretya no, Krishna accepted their invitation, both of them. Dvayoho, huh? of both of them. Why? Priya Chikirshaya. Huh? Because he was uh, pleased by these two devotees' devotion. Huh? So, when Lord is touched in his heart by a devotee's devotion, the Lord uh, um, cannot deny the request of a devotee. Huh? A devotee welcomes him. Like Lord says, Yatra Gayanti Madhbhakta. Wherever devotees lovingly call me, I have to go there. Huh? God agreed. So, Ubayor Avishad Geham. He entered both their homes. But one important thing is said. Ubhabhyam Tad Alakshitaha. Unseen by the other. Actually, this is the first time when I read this commentary, so I understood the last line. How the Lord entered both their houses without the knowledge of the other. So, that is explained nicely in the purport. Huh? Uh, neither could see him entering the other's house. So here, you explained by Bach Chakur Chakur very nicely explains this. Read that. Understanding? Understanding that what Shukadev and Ramasho wanted him to come to their houses, he expanded himself and the sages into two forms. That means both sages also multiplied into two forms. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Without the other person seeing it. See, we all know this past time, Shrutadeva Bahulashwa. We know that Krishna went to both places, correct? No? Now imagine if the news goes to the king that Krishna went to Bahulashwa's house also. I mean, Shrutadeva's house also. If Shrutadeva comes to now, he went to king's palace also. Then it becomes evident that Krishna multiplies into multiple forms. It becomes like that. But he wanted to give them the feeling that I only accepted your invitation. Just like every queen in Dwaraka thought that Krishna is only with Atad Vidya Kovid Aha, it is said. They did not know the prowess of Krishna that Krishna has expanded himself into 16,108 forms. We know it, or they didn't know it. Who? The queens. Actually, many queens would tell the servant maids. Look at my husband, he's so attached to me. He never leaves this palace. I don't know, other queens are going to be envious of me and they will be upset with me. He hardly leaves this place. 
like that she would be telling actually krishna wanted them to have the joy of having this illusion <laughs> okay he think like this and be happy yeah? he made them happy but actually what would happen is he would come out of one palace and then as he would walk the second krishna would come out of second palace then this krishna will merge in second krishna then the third krishna would come so in this way when he would go so every queen will come up to the entrance of the palace to say tata agarakna and krishna is leaving so krishna would leave and then she would go and she would go inside and nobody knew that krishna is actually one one form is coming and merging with other form and finally what goes into the sudarma assembly is only one form and he will go and sit in the assembly all the ministers come and meet in evening when he would come out of assembly one krishna will be walking on the raja marga everybody will see but as he is walking one one krishna enters one one palace <laughs> you know back he expands <laughs> that is why this is his krishna's magic you see hmm? similarly here what he did is very amazingly explained by chakra chakra read it yeah king god merciful krishna is accepted by invitation means coming to my house and shukadev is going home alone. alone like that he thought <laughs> okay and shukadev thought krishna is accepting my invitation and the king is going home alone yeah because when both of them asked him to come i am coming coming he said both understood that he can only go to one place so both of them are thinking that he came to my place alone now read ahead further so they also had developed two forms one jai- joyful with krishna and one despondent without krishna <laughs> see ah uh, yeah ah uh. the neighbors of the king who was with krishna on going to shrutadeva's house saw him there alone and despondent without krishna and the assistants of shrutadev who were with krishna going to the king's house saw him there alone and despondent without krishna ah uh, you understood this see see <coughs> there are two forms of shrutadev huh? and there are some king's men who are working around shrutadev's house huh? so desa which is the dev desa despondent shrutadev because shrutadev saw thought that i call krishna he couldn't come because you know i am a very simple person he has gone to the king's palace like that that should they were talking so that's what they saw and they went and told the king king you know you krishna came here so they poor fellow he couldn't get krishna similarly in king's palace there were some people working who were known to shitadev and they saw whom a uh, despondent king, king. <laughs> they saw so they had other two forms also like that yeah So, but, but the happy uh, Bahulashwa and happy Shudadev, they were only with Krishna. So they were not seen by anybody. Amazing, no? This is Krishna's magic. Mm. So, so therefore, Jyoga Samso says the sages also became two forms, but not independent of the Lord's will. That means Lord arranged for them to double like that. Mm. So, and then the, how the how the king received it, that is mentioned here. That I will not go to because. that way, from here onward starts bahulashwa's reception huh? and then uh, similarly there will be shrutadev's reception both will be mentioned there it will come in the later part of the chapter hmm? but uh, i i was talking about this because we i wanted to talk a little bit about the way the different people have welcomed krishna uh, to their places like the people who raised their arms and uh, welcome to krishna and brought the gifts then i told you about the dwarka vas is welcoming krishna mm-hmm. and also how the lord is very attentive and personal with devotees who execute the devotion very uh, like they spend their time and making krishna the top priority you know? so these are some of the things i wanted to highlight mm-hmm. uh, i have spoken in hindi and there are three four other welcomes given by great devotees which are not i didn't speak about it here one is um vidura maitreya relationship see maitreya sorry vidura goes to uddhava first hmm? hears from him about krishna's past time then uddhava says that very nearby from here maitreya has come so it will be maryada vatikram for me to keep speaking about krishna you should go and hear from him he says then uh, vidura goes there and that Maitreya tells Vidura that you are treating me as a guru, and you want to be my disciple. But honestly, tell me, let me tell you that by looking at you, I am gaining more benefit. I am becoming more Krishna conscious. Why? 
because lord krishna came to hastinapur and he entered your house and after eating in your house he slept in the sofa and putting his two lotus feet on your lap and he went to sleep so generally if you go to somebody's house how many of you think you can put your two feet on somebody's lap when can you do that if at all you do very very close ah very close that goes to show how intimate krishna is and krishna actually wants you to massage his feet and he is going to sleep <laughs> uh, keeping his feet on your lap so simply thinking of that my hair is standing on end maitre is saying therefore i am ready to tell you what krishna spoke to me and uddhava when he left for his abode uh, i can tell you but honestly i can tell you i cannot speak with such realization as you you know had krishna visit your home and intimately associate with you like that so he glorifies and he says that the way you have welcomed krishna into your home has charmed krishna's heart otherwise how he is dealing with you so intimately that's one invitation uh, another invitation will take time which i will not explain mm, muchukunda was sleeping in the gufa you know so he had already done intense devotion in previous life pratitam pracharam purvam the lord says uh, due to which uh, the lord goes there to the gufa and tells him that uh, muchukunda i have come here to uh, you know give you darshan because you uh, i aspired for my darshan the previous life you already done the homework so i have come to wake you up and give you my darshan the lord gives that means uh, welcoming the lord also includes doing our homework properly uh, if you have done a, so i heard is one of radhavan maharaj was telling when lord was running towards the cave away from kalayavana foolish kalayavana thought that lord is afraid of him uh, but why was the lord running like a cow running to go and meet with the calf so who is the calf in this analogy machukunda and the cow is compared to lord krishna so he ran like that uh, the lord ran like a cow going to meet the calf with affection towards muchukunda he ran and then he was telling how muchukunda is also not ordinary king he is a pure devotee king how pure devotees don't like to associate with materialistic people so after the war got over asuras were driven away and the devatas surrounded muchukunda king to praise him appreciate him and muchukunda was not happy to be glorified so much plus the devatas said muchukunda now you come with us we will provide you whatever heavenly delights you want you can bring some rest you can have a long life you can have gold and silver and diamond you can have apsaras and everything so <coughs> muchukunda thought i have to escape from these people so he told them i want only one benediction give me benediction to sleep so maharaj was telling that muchukunda being a pure devotee he hated pajalpa so he wanted to be away from bad association and especially from indra he didn't want to meet him so he wanted to take rest properly i mean he wanted to be away from that bad association so in the, in the pretext of feeling asleep which he was not huh? so it is better to sleep than to do pajalpa with non devotees correct no of course they are not non devotees they got they are devotees but they are mixed devotees correct no therefore he went to sleep and while going to sleep he told one more thing i heard that in this dwapara yuga lord vasudeva is going to appear as devaki sutta huh? brahmanyo devaki putra so i will only open my eyes to see his darshan till the, till i see him i don't want to see anybody else with this two vows he went to sleep so muchukunda sleep is also glorious in our pune temple in one room they have put the board muchukunda room <laughs> and uh, i was wondering what is this then i opened the door and saw four fellows are sleeping inside huh? <laughs> then later on i woke them up i called hey why have you put the board muchukunda room i said how we wanted one place for taking rest i said she muchukunda rested after doing lot of hard work you know you don't do hard work and you put muchukunda room and sleep eh? it's uh, you know unreasonable it is <laughs> correct no so muchukunda of course his resting is not due to hard work his resting is to keep away from bad association and also uh, to the like gradarani would open the eyes when no, not same principle muchukunda adopted also so in this way muchukunda's heart was very enriched with devotion so he also welcomed the krishna in such a manner that krishna went to see him uh, inside the cave so he told about muchukunda told about vidura told about dwarka vasis told about bahulashwa and shrutadeva hmm? and then one or two more i said before this 
Who else before? Fruit vendor lady. Correct. I spoke about that very elaborately also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in all these different uh, examples, you can see how, mm -hmm. like one one last example is our uh, Matangrishi's disciple. What's her name? Shabari. Shabari. Yeah. See, Mata, that uh, Shabari was a little girl. She may be seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. One day she was fetching water from a holy uh, uh, river and she was carrying it. And in that place she would see a lot of rishis and munis roaming in that area in Nasik. Many would be sitting and doing meditation and everything. So because that was the association she got. Uh, she saw so many rishis munis. It was a very, very holy place there. So she also would go and tell them, Are you fellows are sitting and doing Ashtanga Yoga. I also want to learn. And Rishis would look at her and say, you little child, you will learn Ashtanga Yoga in this age. Go, you are carrying water that is proper. <laughs> Do this kind of householder, that's enough. So, but she was very keen. I also want to become, you know, very serious in my spiritual life. So one day she was walking past the ashram of Matanga Rishi. Outside there were some trees. And the trees were showering flowers which were extremely fragrant. They, they were giving fragrance for a long distance. And she would go and pick up those flowers and uh, smell them and carry home also. So one day she saw some disciples of Matangarishi outside. She asked them, Sirs, please, can you please tell me why these flowers are so fragrant? So they said one great secret. They said uh, Matangarishi had many senior disciples and uh, some of them have already passed away. They left their bodies also. So when few of those senior disciples were living in this ashrama, some of them have gone to faraway places to uh, further propagate dharma. They have gone. They are not here now. We are younger ones. We are here. When they were living here, they worked so hard and rendering service to the Supreme Lord, their sweat would fall in this ground. Huh? And Matanga Rishi, seeing their dedication to the devotional service, he blessed them saying that in this place, uh, the fragrance of your dedication to Lord will come as fragrant flowers. He gave that blessing. And then trees came up in that place and the flowers they gave were very extremely fragrant. So this is a blessing of Matangrishi, they said. Now she became determined at any cost I have to become disciple of Matangrishi. Then one day Matangrishi was walking when she went and offered obeisances to him. Uh -huh. And then uh, she got up and Matangrishi said, you, you are saying you want to learn Ashtanga Yoga, you are a child. How will you learn? You are a little girl. She said, no, I am ready for it. If you can teach me. So he taught her. And then seeing her sincere practice, when Mahathanga, she was very, very old, beyond 90. He told her that now I am leaving the world now. But uh, you will definitely get the darshan of Supreme Lord Ramachandra. Huh? Because you are very, very sincere in your devotion. But it may not happen soon. It may take long time. But be patient. So she was very patient. And she became 90 old, 90 years old old when she became very old that time Lord Ramachandra came and he ate that berry bear uh, from the hands of Shabari and Shabari told uh, Lord Ram asked her what benediction do you want she said actually many other disciples of my uh, spiritual master they all have gone back to him after he left the world now I am stuck in this world only because he had given me a blessing that I will get your darshan so that darshan is already fulfilled now. So now you kindly bless me that I'll go back to my spiritual master and I will eternally serve him, like that she says. So she got the best, she got the shelter of Guru and darshan of the Lord. Both she got because of her quality of devotion. You can see that. So in this way, there are innumerable examples of people whose quality of their heart was like gold, due to which they could attract. They could uh, attract the Lord to come. Mm -hmm. So we, for us, Prabhupada has given us the four related principles, chanting of the holy name, study of the Shastra, hearing of the lectures, you know, worshipping the deities, distributing books, distributing prasad, distributing holy name. So many things he has given us. And uh, first of all, we should perform some of these items. <coughs> items. At least we should perform them with whatever quality at our disposal we have. And afterward, we should try to do this with a more uh, purer and purer quality. Mm -hmm. And in the course of doing it, 
if it is assisting in proper mission and proper becomes pleased acharya has become pleased then that blessing will be able to attract the lord's attention huh? into our hearts the prabhupad ki jai har bhaktavind ki jai now you take prasad now very late now huh? yeah. yeah so దదామి దివ్యం చక్షుంతే ఐస్ నో ఐ విల్ గివ్ యూ ద ఐస్ టు సీ మీ సేమ్ థింగ్ హీ డెడ్ విత్ ఆల్ దిస్ పీపుల్ ఆన్ ద వే దట్ మీన్స్ వెన్ హీ డిసైడ్స్ టు గివ్ ఐస్ టు సమ్ వన్ దే ఓన్లీ కెన్ సీ హెమ్ If Krishna decides that I don't want to reveal myself to them, Parang Mukham, he will turn his face away. And like, he did that with Kalevana. See, when it came to Kalevana, Krishna said Parang Mukham, he turned his face away. When it came to uh, Muchukunda, Nityam Pramuditam, Srimat, Shuchismitam, it is said. His face was a blossoming face, smiling face. He smiled at Muchukunda, you know, uh, his everlasting smile. and then he saying shuchismitam he smiled very beautifully at him and he uh, avalokam it is that he looked at him which means uh, it's all ultimately up to krishna he seeing our attitude he will decide to reveal himself to us therefore bhagavan thakur said do not try to see krishna what you should do yes. serve him in such a way that he will want to yes. correct one question to yesterday yeah yeah we didn't get time to about dwija was used twice born twice born why twice born your father gives you the first birth and then guru gives you the second birth he gives a sacred thread correct no that's the third one also that is done for the vedic sacrifices uh, one type of initiation is given but that is uh, like a naimitika it is not nitya it's not for a nitya karma it's a naimitika karma occasional but uh, the spiritual master uh, awakens us when we take diksha and all so we get guru as a father shastra as the mother and vaishnavas become relatives that's second birth clear na okay how let's take prasad now kaam you must be very hungry now all of you